Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here, catchjitsu.com. Gonna talk to you today about Karate Go Jiu Jitsu, my tournament idea rules. I've actually been writing down since I was 18 years old. Yes, that's correct. But these are rules that I think are ideal for most people in the world. These are rules that are ideal for most martial arts in the world. So basically everyone can compete under the same rules in what is sort of MMA light which is important of going through all ranges of combat, which is why individual traditional styles basically suck by themselves. And um, it's a style I've developed since I was really 18 years old, when I first saw the UFC. So we're talking, I'm getting old here, that's like 20, almost, almost 24 years ago. And I look bad right now, guys. I've been sick really bad for like 12 days, so I don't know what's going on. Um, still waiting on some results, hopefully to come in tomorrow. Um, but uh, anyway guys, um, Karate Go Jiu Jitsu, these are my rules and I'll show you uh, some video and I'll talk over it, a video demoing the rules, the basic rules, and I'll talk to you how they change depending on years of training or belt rank, okay? Um, what this is, and this is something I, I wrote down and I proposed, I had Mike Swain years ago. I had Mike Swain look at it, I had my jiu-jitsu coach at the time, um, Solo Barrow look at it. They both liked it, and this is before Solo just moved to San Diego, so when he was still in Michigan, so maybe people can figure out that timeline. I actually had a very nice printout of the rules and everything. I had them look at it, and, and both Swain and Solo Barrow liked it, and then uh, I moved to California, started training with uh, Hedy Bravado, ready something anyway that guy um, started training with that guy and I gave him the rules at the time it was called combat jujitsu they were my combat jujitsu rules and I had just gotten super popular on YouTube in early 2009 before there were so many instructionals out uh, under eHow or Expert Village for my combat jujitsu um, Instructional videos. They had four. They put. I filmed sixty on different like techniques or situations. Sixty. They put forty-five out on YouTube right away, which has about seventeen or eighteen million views, I believe. So I was known as a combat jujitsu guy, and I gave Eddie Bravo the combat jujitsu. Anyway, now he does combat jujitsu tournaments, which was kind of like jujitsu MMA light he made for grapplers. So see, kind of the connection. Not really the same rules as mine. I'll get into them, but anyway, that's a little bit of history. That, yes, is true. I gave Eddie the printout. It says Combat Jiu-Jitsu on it, and the DVD says Combat Jiu-Jitsu on it. Anyway, guys, now we'll just call it what my style I've always been calling Karate Go Jiu-Jitsu. What's Karate Go Jiu-Jitsu mean? Well, in Japanese, Nihongo, Karate, empty hand, is usually how it's translated. Well, you could, some people say China hand, you know, down in Okinawa. Maybe it is historically true, I don't know. But let's go with karate, karate, empty hand, go, hard, ju, soft, jitsu, style. So empty hand, hard, and soft style. That's the style I teach when I teach in the gi. Mixing, uh, utilizing the SGG method, striking, throwing, grappling method. You don't have a total martial art in my opinion. Whatever the martial art is, if it doesn't address striking, throwing or takedowns, and grappling, then it's not a complete martial art. It's not a total martial art. And that's why most martial arts train, and traditional martial arts train singularly, suck by themselves. It doesn't mean they suck at the range or what particular thing they're good at. It just means they suck in the totality of the circumstances. Because guess what ranges happen? Like, why is Wing Chun not that good by itself? It, Something can be useful. Well, because it happens to be the range that is the easiest to crash into. Boxers do it all the time, and they're not supposed to clinch. Okay? Because from outside boxing to clinch, that little in-between stage, that's the easiest thing. You just reach out, and you grab a cold head someone's head, or an overhook, or underhook. So, phases of combat go through different ranges. So, it's not a total martial art unless it usually is a striking, throwing, grappling method. And this one can bring all martial arts together, and this is what I've been coming up with since I was 18, I guess I'm not good at getting it out there. I'm going to put it on video now. Maybe someone else will help me host a tournament someday. 
This also got me invited because of my ideals that I tr exchanged in emails. This got me invited out to Japan for the first ever um, Daido Juko World Championships in 2001. I also competed in the third championships in 2009. So because we had very similar ideas about Budo, about spirit, making good human beings, um, about you wanted realistic martial arts, but didn't necessarily most people business men, husbands, wives, don't necessarily all want to be pro MMA fighters. Okay? They want to train at a level black and blue eyes. They they have jobs to do. So anyway, with this turn and I'm gonna show you footage guys. Bear with me. What it is is a tournament with two by two minute rounds with the possibility of a third round. If rounds one and two are split, one each fighter, irregardless of the points it goes to a third round. So even if one guy gets, say, five points, wins the first round, one guy ends to five to zero, and the next round is one to zero, just hypothetically, the second round, that's not a win for the first guy who coasted in the second round. We've all seen Pride. You get gassed and the guys come back and get their asses kicked, right? So we've all seen Pride rules, right? So, um... You can't. You shouldn't coast. It, none of this point advantage thing and holding on. You see in gi jiu jitsu, sport jiu jitsu, you go to a third round. If you totally dominate, there's no reason. If you're that much better of a fighter, you win the first two rounds because it's going to be tournament brackets. You get rewarded. You get to save your energy. It only goes two rounds. So if you win both the first and the second round, fight over. Obviously, there's a pretty big disparity. If you don't, though. Even if you got more points than the other guy, obviously you're pretty close level. That guy has a chance of coming back just like a real fight. Amazing. Um, so again, you have a chance of winning points in all three categories, being striking, throwing, grappling. This is a gi tournament. People would wear uh, traditionally white or blue gi or a blue kirka. Uh, have shin guards, cup, and mouth guard required. Okay. It's just chicken scratch I just put down now. And you're allowed to kick the legs, kick the body, kick the head, like Kyoko Shin. And basically, you can think of it as a mixture of like Kyoko Shin or karate mixed with judo, mixed with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's not a bad, easy way of thinking about it. Um, you can knee the body, can knee the legs standing up, knee the body, and uh, punch the body full bore. And this is also a good way to train. You just take it down from 100% to like whatever they're able to do, 65, 70, 75, 80, whatever, like 75%. You know, most, you know, people can train at um, once you've had a year in martial arts. So um, the only difference is beginner would be like one to three years of training or BJJ blue belt level. Um, there'd be no strikes on the ground. You could add an intermediate level, three to five years, like BJJ purple or brown belt equivalent, whether you put brown with purple or you put brown with black, it depends. Um, you would be allowed horizontal punches to the body, not straight down to the solar plexus, straight down to the ribs, vertical punch, or like a 12-6 elbow, no 12-6 punches. Not, no even 11-5 punches. They got to be really hooking around the side, so hooking the ribs and, and stuff uh, is okay. Um, but no straight down, um, just for potential more like broken chest bone, separated cartilage, and stuff like that. Again, you want people to train realistic martial arts, even if they don't want to be a pro fighter. And even jujitsu guys, current sports jujitsu, that's not totally realistic either. You're going full, you know, you're going randori. I won't even say full force anymore because people just flow roll only. They don't go hardcore sometimes like they should as often at a lot of places, but um, like we did in the old days. But um, they don't, it doesn't mean they even practice stand-up and going through the ranges or closing the distance to that clinch takedown when someone's trying to punch your head off. Like when I started Grace Jiu-Jitsu, very end, actually, 96, I generally say January 97, uh, I think one of my first days was we were throwing bombs at each other with boxing gloves and having a clinch and get that outside leg trip. So... What you want is people to be able to go through ranges of combat. So even if they're not doing full MMA, boy, if they're attacked on the street, if they happen to have to defend themselves or defend somebody, they're used to going, and trust me, the cardio needed for two minutes of going through ranges of combat is a lot different than just full rolling jujitsu. You have to be able to go through the ranges of combat. Um, advanced black belt would be basically the same, or 
depending on your athletic commission in the state, you could possibly add knees to the head, standing, side and horizontal knees to the legs. Like if you have side mount, you could, should be able to knee the guy in the body um, on the ground and palm strikes to the head. So those are optional rules and that's again good rules for sparring. And you know, this is kind of MMA light. This is what BJJ black bolts or real black bolts in judo or, you know, Sambo guys, combat Sambo guys, you know, they, this kind of stuff everybody should be training. You know, and if we can get the Aikido and Shi Jiao guys and other people doing some realistic s stuff too, all the better. So, guys, I'll show, I'll play a video here and you can look it up separately on YouTube, of course. Karate Go Jiu Jitsu Sparring. Uh, this guy I'm going against, he's a pretty experienced amateur MMA fighter. I think he's got about 9 10 fights. Was a BJJ blue belt. I think he's purple now. Um, a pretty decent strike. You see him, see him give me some heavy body shots because I was a, a bit heavier than him. I, I'm not really kneeing or punching the body near as hard as he's punching me. I told him to go 90%. He really, he, he really was. He isn't. He, that makes this video kind of interesting. I'm going uh, maybe like 70. If you break your toys, you can't play with them. And if you're limited on training partners that are even at this level, then you try to keep them around. Um, but he was hitting me with some good body shots, you know. Probably like amateur MMA, you see the difference. A pro is more relaxed, waiting for the mistake to take advantage of. And an amateur's uh, going aggressive. So anyway, we're seeing, the, we didn't see, unfortunately we didn't see a lot of outside striking. But we're seeing a lot of good clinch striking, knees and elbows. Get him with the lateral drop, try to pass, catch, captures me in half guard here. And because of shin guards, boy, it makes it a lot more different, difficult to pass. So here I'm looking to pass, seeing if I can play with his feet, get him to open up a bit, pull on the gi a little bit. Can't get him to pass. Now there's the title of the video, you can look it up on YouTube if you want to see better quality. Trying to get that up there. Well, finally get it up there to try the no hand pass with the shin. Trying to knee slide through, but it's hard. Hey guys, I have a th uh, um, shin guard on it. It's not as easy. So, I, we both would have gotten one point for striking. I would have earned a point for the um, takedown throw, the lateral drop. I'm probably close to getting one point in grappling and him not, even though I'm not really passing, but I am dominating uh, position. You know, if this was a real fight, we know I could be landing the better strikes. And it doesn't matter because the full pawn, and it doesn't go to a second or third round if you get it in the first round like here, the full pawn, the full win, the full victory uh, is submission. So, your goal is to land good strikes, to clinch and throw or have good takedown defense, to throw the guy, to dominate and get a submission within two minutes. Kind of sounds like old school BJJ look like in a street fight, doesn't it? You may be punch and kick on the outside, you close that distance, you get the takedown, you choke him out. So this is realistic type, uh, you know, footage. I'll show a few seconds here of the second round we did. Hello, everybody. If, if this Barbara stupid guy who I'm not going to let you hear this voice, Rich Ba 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 Ba, because I don't want to get. Round two, credit go Jiu Jitsu beta testing. So we're going to go round two. Now. What do you guys think about the way we bowed there? Traditional style and kind of Kyokushin style. Oh, man, he's got some fast hands. And some punches to my big old body. So we're moving on the outside here. Clinching. I kind of let him take me down here in a second because I'm looking. I'm look. I wanted to see to make it look different because I dominated the first round. So I let him take me down while I was looking for a popover choke to try and show some gee stuff. Um, but he's burying his head pretty good in my chest here. I can't get the popover choke. Um, the rest of this is pretty boring without ground strikes, and because he's a blue belt, so there wouldn't be ground strikes. And you probably shouldn't train a blue blue belt. With ground strikes, but should purple belts be training punches to the body on the ground at least? Yeah. Should browns and blacks be training with slaps to the face too? I say yes. I say yes. Keep jujitsu real. Hashtag keep jujitsu real. Hashtag keep karate real. Ha hashtag keep all martial arts real. And uh, I'll just show you finish here.
Free up Wolfman. Reverse knee bar. Some people call it a dog bar. Um, so anyway, guys, that's what you see. This has been my dream for over half my life. Karate go jiu-jitsu. So start doing this. You got a little school. Start, you know, just try these sparring rules out. Videotape it. Send it to me. If it looks awesome, I'll, I'll put it on my YouTube page if you want. How about that? I'll, I'll shout your channel out. Some of you guys have been calling me out with little channels, but really you're just trying to grow your YouTube channels. I know what's up. I was born at night, but not last night, baby. I'm getting old, getting wise. So, guys, um, anyway, that's Karate Go Jiu Jitsu Rules. Now, I'm going to make a second video, a much shorter video, but I'm going to talk to you about my new idea, really, new idea for, uh, for throw to sub, throw to sub speed grappling. So check it out. Please check it out. And please look at my uh, recent videos I've been doing. Hope you guys thumbs up, share, like, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. Make me feel warm and fuzzy and I'll catch you on the flip side.